One of the trials that you won't see a publication on um, that I'm very sad did not did not get to completion and did not really accrue enough patients and I hope we can find a trial um, find collaborators that do a trial on this is bladder cancer prevention and again I, I go back to my my old friend uh, Yushin Zhang at Roswell Park Cancer Institute in, in Buffalo um, he made the observation many, many years ago that, gee, when you think about how sulforaphane courses through the body, um, it winds up being excreted in the urine as either sulforaphane, free and clear, or um, the majority, majority of it comes out as its conjugates with glutathione, uh, one of the main antioxidant uh, um, peptides in the body. Um, glutathione or uh, acetylcysteine, um, sulforaphane, a variety of sort of antioxidant glutathione-derived conjugates. And all of them have some activity um, in upregulating NRF2 also. So what happens? Go in here, you eat sulforaphane or you ingest it, or you can even put it on your skin. We've done a number of trials showing protection against ultraviolet radiation. It gets metabolized, it gets excreted. How does it get excreted? In the urine. What happens to urine? It hangs around in a bladder. So what you wind up having is a high concentration, relatively high concentration of both sulforaphane and its active metabolites in the bladder, bathing that bladder epithelium, um, and it's only obviously periodically released. Um, so it's a perfect, we, we think it would be the perfect place to demonstrate protection against cancer or cancer prevention. And so we actually had permission for and started and only accrued, I think, only enrolled, I think, one or two subjects, a trial in which we were to look at just that. And these were people where we were looking at secondary, at reappearance of bladder cancer. So they had had a, a, a tumor um, removed that had cystectomy, um, and we were looking at, at, at the health of the bladder and and um, uh, levels of NRF2 in, in bladder tissue that was, that was acquired by, by biopsy. Um, so that was the design of the study. Um, as I say, it didn't happen. We're actually trying to get one off the ground with dogs now. Dogs are a little different because they sort of pee when they want to, so there's probably not the same constant reservoir of sulforaphane and its metabolites in the bladder, but, but certainly to a degree there will be. Um, it's also harder to collect a 24-hour urine on a dog and to do some of the interventions. But, um, but so we, we are trying to get a, a, a canine bladder cancer prevention trial off the ground. Um, and as I say, we'd love to see it done in, in, in humans yeah. because it's, it's, if, if there was a gimme, that's a gimme. I mean, it's got to work there if it's going to work anywhere. The epidemiology is so strong showing, I mean, I can just study cancer. after study after study showing cruciferous intake, you know, yep. raw yep. broccoli, um, you know, just it's yep. showing preventive, preventive and preventing yep. can bladder recurrence as well. Yep. Um, people that are eating these foods. So it's not a clinical trial, but it's just associative data. So, yeah, yeah. And, and there's been animal studies with bladder cancer where they give them some carcinogen and sulfur pain in it. So oh, I, yeah. I agree yeah. with you. I mean, it's it would be really nice to see an actual clinical trial done in humans, and it does yeah. make perfect sense. Prostate we, cancer we is another so. one that seems to also sort of go hand in hand. I mean, the, the prostate True. and, you know, the prostate inflammation, mm -hmm. you know, seems to be lowered. And, and this, you know, one study is showing that men with prostate cancer um, that were given uh, pretty relatively high doses of sulforaphane, it slowed their doubling rate of the PSA by 86%. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, that's that pretty was, significant. Yeah, yeah. So there are, there, are, there are two prostate cancer studies. I'm aware, well, there are probably more, but Joshi Alum call at OHSU did one and, right. and uh, Bernard Cipolla in France using actually that uh, the supplement. Um, so Chipola's study used where he showed a dramatic reduction in the trajectory of uh, PSA numbers um, was in, used, um, uh, what's it called? Uh, uh, prostaphane? prostaphane? Prostaphane, thank you. Yeah, yeah the French uh, supplement. Yeah. And the alum cull study used our homemade broccoli sprout extract. Um, you mentioned the animal size. We actually were 
um, partnered on three or four animal studies with Yushin Zhang and Rex Mundy in New Zealand, and it's, it was extremely impressive um, to see the difference in, in um, bladder cancer, right. uh, tumor, tumor size. number, yeah. tumor size. I mean, and it number. was. I saw, yeah. I saw the publication. Extremely yeah. robust. Yeah, so. nice gross color pictures, too. Yeah, yeah. I'm convinced. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and the other thing is, like, smokers, smokers get a lot, smokers get bla- bladder cancer. Yes, um, yes. And that, you know, I think, first of all, people that smoke should quit smoking, first and foremost. But if they don't quit smoking, I mean, I think they should be consuming broccoli sprouts like no nobody's business, you know. Because, I mean, they're accumulating so much benzene and all sorts yep. of carcinogens. So, 